In this short video, we're going to discuss what it takes to reset a military marker. This military marker is not the one that we're working on today. It's adjacent to the one we're going to do. What's important to note is how low this thing is sunk in the ground. It is sunk down probably 12 to 14 inches into the soil. And at some point, I've been told they've come across them that are buried almost all the way to the top. These things are several, could be 100 pounds plus. They're made out of marble. And as, if the ground is very soft and doesn't drain well, this thing will just slowly sink into the soil. The stone we're going to be working on today is the same size, but it was here. It's here. You can see the dark soil stain here. It, it was found basically laying in the, in the dirt right here. It was pulled out, and then uh, the string line was pulled in order to figure out its orientation to get it in a straight line. Then they start excavating out a hole. The hole is squared off, and you'll see why in just a minute. You need to get the tamping tool down inside. Now there's a formula for how high these things to be set. It's, it's a uniform height. So what they're going to do is they're going to measure the height of the stone, subtract the distance from the top down to determine where the uh, ground level should be, and that'll be the depth of the hole that they want to dig. They're going to dig it a little bit deep because they're going to put in gravel and sand at the bottom of it. They want the thing to drain. This seems to help any moisture that accumulates to drain further into the soil and not allow the stone to be sucked into the ground. So gravel and sand are mixed in. They're worked and tamped. A board is put across the, the ground level and a tape measure comes from the soil to the bottom of the board and determines if the hole is at the right depth once the stone is placed. No need to use a hoist here. Two people can pick this thing up and walk it, you know, using these two points over the hole and slowly set it in the hole. Once it's set in the hole, it needs to line up with the face of this string in order to be in line with any of the other monuments that you have. Once that's done, you take more sand and gravel and you start putting around the side of the stone. Here you can see the sand and gravel are worked in. In order to pack it down, you use a 2x4. You don't want to use any metal tools around this thing. The wood is forgiving, so this 2x4 is, is used to ram the gravel and soil into compaction around the stone. All the time, you're checking for level and plumb. Here we're checking for plumb. Because it has a dome top, you can't really check it for level, but you'll check it for plumb on two sides. If you need to make some adjustments, you lift it and then you add more packing with this tool here, the good old 2x4. Once you've got it plumbed, you're going to the top few inches of uh, soil, let's say it's six inches, you're going to put the existing soil around it. That way, if there's grass or other things, it'll grow in that and it's not just the, uh, the sand and gravel. You can see how much soil was displaced during this process. This was used to fill in the, uh, the void left from the concrete on another video. This gentleman here is the historian who uh, wrote up the story and is getting a uh, historical marker for this gentleman here. And so he started the cleaning process using D2. Another more uh, ample guy came in and finished the cleaning process. And with the surface dirt removed, D2 will eventually brighten this stone up and George Owens, the gentleman that's at rest here, will get an historical marker sometime in the future. Here's the back side of it here. And again, when you compare this to this, you can see how much this second stone has dropped. What we learned at this is you can walk through any cemetery and you can find problems that need to be fixed. Sometimes these fixes don't take sophisticated equipment. It takes somebody with some basic skills, some tools, some supplies like gravel and sand, 
and you can make a difference. It's important to get these things in place and not laying down flat or semi-buried where lawnmowers can run over them and further damage them or people will trip over them. End of video.